Father God, we just sit in your presence. We again peek into the stable and see you there. Lord God, this Christmas time, we thank you that we can pause and worship. For many, it's a hard time. As fires rage, Lives are lost, people are hurting, drought affects our land. Father God, we just pause and offer you our prayers and our reflections. But you indeed are a God who brings the healing, who brings the comfort, who brings the peace goodwill and joy amongst hardship and amongst suffering. And Lord, I thank you that we can gather freely here and celebrate you. To offer you our life, our joy and our peace. And so that we surrender afresh to you today. May we be like those wise men and bring our gifts and bow and worship you with great joy. For you indeed are our Lord and Savior. And we thank you and we celebrate you with joyful hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning and welcome. Lovely to have you all here. We found an earring, if that belongs to you. It's not mine. Um, doesn't match my handbag. Um, yeah. Is it dying? Oh, so I'm, um, I'm not going to comment on the uh, quality of it. Okay, it's how's if it's worth anything. Yeah, so. If you've lost one, it's it's floating around. Thank you yesterday for all the people that turned up and mowed and cut and carted and cleaned chairs and made great chairs look white. It's amazing. It's miraculous. Um, yeah, so and put trees up and so thank you. We had a lovely morning. And, and great, yes, and more will continue later. So thank you for all the help you do at this time of year and our carols tonight and it'll be a fantastic time at 6.30. So last week we had the shepherds. This week uh, we had the wise men and Christmas Day we have a child is born. Very predictable, but exciting. We're looking at Matthew chapter 2, first 12 verses there up on the screen for you. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem, asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of the religious law and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem, in Judea, they said. Well, this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child, and when you find him, come back and tell me, so that I too can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. They went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route. For God had warned them in a dream not to return to him. 
A teacher was reading the Christmas story, the birth of Jesus, to her young prep class. She was hoping that they all understood what she was saying. So she gave them a, a little quiz. What do you call the, the wise men? A little boy put up his hand and said, The three amigos! <laughs> the teacher was troubled. What gifts did they bring the baby Jesus? The same five-year-old put up his hand. They brought him gold, Frankenstein and Smurfs. <laughs> yes, you can use that one. Yeah. So we're looking at the gold, Frankensteins and Smurfs today. Well, gold, frankincense and myrrh. First thing, when God came, he announced his coming by a star showing the way. How do we shine for Jesus? Amongst the struggles and stresses of life, does it put a little bit of a dampener on our light as we shine for him? You are a star pointing others to Jesus. Bring truth, bring light, bring hope into those spiritually dark places. Bring some joy as you shine for Him. The second thing, when God came, He came to all people. These wise men from the East, probably from Persia, were Gentiles like us. Jesus came for the whole world. He calls us to go to our community, to go to our city, to go to our nation, to go to our world and tell people of Him. And we're reminded of Jesus' words in Matthew 28 up on the screen there for you. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them everything, to obey everything I have taught you and commanded you. Third thing today. When God came, He fulfilled His promises. When the priests searched the Scriptures for the place where Jesus would be born, they discovered that it was to be in a town called Bethlehem. That's where the Messiah would be born. It was told by the prophet Micah in chapter 2, uh, sorry, chapter 5, <laughs> verse 2. Many people know of God, and many people know of Jesus. But do they worship Him? Do they honour him? Herod wanted him killed. He wasn't going to worship him. He thought his rule was in jeopardy. He feared for his throne. That a ruler might come and end it. But friends, God comes because he wants to rule our life. He wants to transform our life and transform our heart as we shine for Him. Fourth thing today. When God came, He came to common people in a common town. Who are the people that we know who need to hear this message? Will they see us pointing the way to Jesus? Will they see us shining for Him? Our fifth thing, when God came, He revealed Himself to all those who would seek Him. The wise men rejoiced because the star appeared and gave them direction to the Saviour. When God came, He brought joy. He brings hope. And as we discover Him, we too find direction and meaning in life. When God came to the wise men, they worshipped Him. Is our sixth thought today. They gave Him gifts. What will you bring to honour Him? What will you bring to Jesus this day, this Christmas season, and honour Him? They were the first star trappers. Jesus, the Holy Child, this is the journey of the ancient wise men, their continuing mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man had gone before. 
and they persevered and they faithfully followed. As we picture that nativity scene, we see the shepherds, we see the wise men, we see the angels. But the wise men didn't go to the stable. It was later on, and Matthew quite intentionally uses the word uses a word that means house instead of stable. And he also uses the word child instead of baby. Jesus was probably 12 to 24 months old when the wise men found him and visited and worshipped and gave the gifts. The seventh thing, a diligent search for God always leads to Jesus. They've been travelling for a long time, following a star in the western sky. The star moved and it finally stopped right over the house where Jesus was staying. It was a supernatural light. Friends, people are still searching for God and asking, where is this Jesus? Who is this Jesus? What's this all about? What a great opportunity for us. As a church community this time of year, to point the way to the Messiah, to point the way to Jesus, who's come for all people. Friends, if you are serious about seeking God, you will all, it will always lead to Jesus. Up on the screen for you from Timothy and Colossians. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man of Jesus Christ. He is the image of the invisible God, for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile himself to all things. So they searched for God and they found Him. They found Jesus. And if we search too, we will find Him. Our eighth thing this morning is if you are wise, give Him your treasure. Give Him your treasure. One of the most enjoyable things about Christmas time is receiving gifts, amen? Let's be honest, we love it. It's also nice to give as well. And if you've been around this place over the last few months, much has been given and many lives blessed. It's nice to receive, but it's also nice to give. And the wise men came and opened their chests and laid their gifts before Jesus. Some of the get best gifts have been things that our children have maybe made for us over the years or grandchildren or bought with their pocket money and we've opened it and smiled sweetly and said thank you. Oh lovely, another macaroni necklace. Socks and hankies. You can all do with more painted stones as paperweights. But it's in the giving and in the receiving, the joy on their face. A thoughtful gift from a loved one or a friend because they know you well and bless your life. Jesus is the best gift of all. Let us receive Him. Let us worship Him. Let us embrace Him. Love always gives. You can give without loving, but you can't love without giving. The gifts given to Jesus that first Christmas, John Stott writes, These gifts were not accidental. These men were wise in their giving of their gifts. And it teaches us about Jesus. Gold is a gift fit for a king. Frankincense was constantly used by the priests in the temple. Myrrh was used to embalm the dead. In those three gifts we see who he is, what he came to do, and what it would cost him. Give him your gold. Give him your best. Give him your worship and give him your joy. It says that they were overjoyed. 
As they presented their gifts to Jesus and found him, the message Bible says they could hardly contain themselves. Their joy was expressed as they bowed down and worshipped the child. Like the wise men, may we bow down and worship Jesus. Let us be filled with great joy. Many of us come to church, but do we truly worship? Do we truly worship? Don't just participate, but express your worship through your gratitude towards God. Let us be overjoyed. Myrrh, your life and loyalty. Myrrh was an ointment used on dead bodies to stop decay. This gift reveals that they understood that the death of the Messiah would be significant. Jesus died for you, and he died for me. As we look again into that manger, once you've met Jesus, you can't go home the same way. Our final point today, once you've met Jesus, you can't go home the same way. God warned the Magi in a dream to go home a different way. Not only did they return by a different route, but they also went back home as different men. For they truly had encountered Jesus Christ and recognised him for who he was and they would never be the same. Will you go home a different person this morning because we've met with Jesus? Because we again have discovered him? Once you meet him, your life takes a new direction. Once you've met him, your life has a greater focus and purpose. A mum writes these funny things this Christmas time. As it gets closer to Christmas, I find myself reminding my daughter that Santa is watching, when she doesn't listen to me. When I took my daughter to visit Santa, when she was four years old, after hopping off Santa's lap and starting to walk away, she turned back to him and yelled, Oh Santa, you don't need to watch me anymore. I'm always good. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Claus burst with laughter. So did the people and children in the line. My daughter was playing Mary and forgot her lines, and so she ad-libbed, telling Joseph, I'm having a baby, oh, and by the way, it's not yours. <laughs> the mum writes, I was at a friend's house when her six-year-old son poked his head around the door and said, Mum, you know how I wanted a bike for Christmas? Well, I don't need it now. I found one behind your wardrobe. <laughs> Who are those children? Not us, praise the Lord. What does God want to say to you and what does God want to say to me this morning? Shine for Him. Give Him your life. Give Him your disappointment. Embrace the joy. Embrace the wonder. In Daniel chapter 12, verse 3, And those who lead many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever. Isn't that great? Wherever that is. It's there, I don't know. But Daniel 12, 3. Oh, look. Next. 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 Have we got a next? Oh, look. The Bible says, And those who lead many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever and ever. May we shine for Him. Have a happy and blessed Christmas. Look forward to seeing you tonight. Look forward to seeing you at Christmas Day. God bless you. Thanks for coming.